In his final NASCAR season, Kevin Harvick will drive the 29 car one final time. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Last night, Kevin Harvick broke the internet, quite literally. I saw some tweets from folks who said the uh, Stuart Haas Racing merch website was crashing due to high demand. We'll talk all about the announcement Harvick made last night in just a moment, but first, we have to thank today's sponsor. Hampton Farms is a family-owned company that, actually just like NASCAR, is in the middle of celebrating its 75th anniversary. They're known for their different varieties of flavored peanuts that are both high in protein and grown right here in the United States. People love eating Hampton Farms peanuts because they bring a sense of nostalgia, of fun. They remind people of summer, of fun outdoor activities. Personally, I think of baseball season, which it just so happens returns to action later this month. You can find Hampton Farms peanuts in the produce section of your local grocery store and get nutty with Hampton Farms on social media. You can follow them at Hampton Farms Peanuts on both Instagram and TikTok. Once again, that's Hampton Farms. You can find them in the produce section of your local grocery store. All right, you probably already saw the Kevin Harvick news. You know exactly what I'm going to talk about, but I still want to react to it here on this show. In case there are some of you out there who haven't heard the news, last night on FS1's NASCAR Race Hub, Kevin Harvick revealed a special paint scheme he's gonna run at North Wilkesboro in May. For one final race, Kevin Harvick's iconic number 29 is back. Take a look, the white, the red, the classic RCR font. Incredible stuff, reminiscent, of course, of Kevin Harvick's 2001 paint scheme, his rookie season. It figures that they would announce this this week leading up to Atlanta, which was the site of Kevin Harvick's first career win in a very similar paint scheme. This is so cool. I've seen some fans, of course, gotta be negative. Oh, it's ruined by the new number placement. Just stop, just stop. Kudos to Richard Childress Racing for allowing Stuart Haas and Kevin Harvick to run this number. Bush Beer is the sponsor, of course, not GM Goodrich, but kudos to Bush Beer running kind of a throwback logo, a throwback design of their own. It's not perfect, it's not exactly true to the original, but when you glance at this scheme, you know exactly what it's supposed to be. And just seeing that red 29 font on track once again on a modern day NASCAR stock car. I didn't think we'd ever see it again. It's been a decade since that number, I believe, was on track. I eat that kind of stuff up. Like even last year when uh, Chris Buescher drove the yellow Matt Kenseth 17 font at Darlington, it wasn't even Matt Kenseth behind the wheel, but as a Kenseth fan, that brought a tear to my eye. I love seeing that thing in person because to me, the, the unique number logos, those icons, that is a huge part of the brand, especially nowadays when your favorite driver probably has five or six different primary sponsors over the course of the season. The number logo, you know, the three, the 43, Chase Elliott's number nine, the Wood Brothers 21, the Kevin Harvick 29, the RCR 29, that is the brand. So it's really cool to see the red 29 back in all of its former glory. This die cast has actually sat on my desk for the past couple of years, ever since I found this thing in a random antique store, loved it. It's crazy to see a very similar design now on a modern Gen 7 NASCAR next gen car. That's crazy. Kevin Harvick released a statement yesterday and explained why he's bringing the 29 back for one race. Harvick said, quote, when I sat in the 29 for the first time, it really wasn't by choice, but I definitely wouldn't have done it any differently. Dale Earnhardt's passing changed our sport forever and it changed my life forever and the direction it took. Looking back on it now, I realized the importance of getting in the cup car and then I wound up winning my first race at Atlanta in the number 29 after Dale's death. The significance and the importance of keeping that car on the racetrack and winning that race early at Atlanta, knowing now what it meant to the sport and just that moment in general, being able to carry on was so important. Again, he's announcing this the same week as Atlanta. Makes a ton of sense. Really cool moment for Kevin Harvick fans and for longtime NASCAR fans who remember that race at Atlanta in 2001. I wasn't a NASCAR fan at the time. I was only three years old, I think. I've obviously gone back and watched that race, watched the finish, the replays many, many times. I can only imagine what it would have been like to be in the grandstands, especially if you were a Dale Earnhardt fan. 
to see Kevin Harvick wheel that race car to victory so soon, so early in the season. Truly one of the most important single moments in this sport's history. I'm glad Kevin Harvick is able to both commemorate that moment with this announcement coming at Atlanta, but he's also able to honor his own career, which I wanna talk about in a moment by driving the number 29 one final time in his final season at a historic racetrack like North Wilkesboro. I remember seeing photos back in the day. I think he was driving like the old Shell Pennzoil 29 at Wilkesboro. This is like 20. 10 or 2011, he did some testing there right before the track you know, became basically abandoned. So the 29, I guess, already has some experience at North Wilkesboro in the past you know, 12, 13 years. It's going back. Speaking of testing at North Wilkesboro, in just a few days, March 20th, Carson Hosevar, Zane Smith, and Corey Heim will test Craftsman trucks at North Wilkesboro. And then the next day, March 21st, Austin Dillon, Chris Buescher, and Tyler Reddick will test Cup Series cars ahead of May's All-Star Race. So North Wilkesboro is back, baby. Cars on track in just a few days. I wanna talk about Kevin Harvick for a moment. I sang his praises uh, after this past Sunday's race at Phoenix, where he almost single-handedly managed to take down the two dominant Hendrick Motorsports Chevys. He once again carried the banner, shouldered the load for Stuart Haas Racing, and really for Ford as a whole manufacturer. At 47 years old, Kevin Harvick is still an elite talent, easily one of the top five drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series today. That kind of longevity is rare. Even in NASCAR, where we're used to seeing star athletes contend for wins and championships into their 40s. What Kevin Harvick has been able to do recently is remarkable. But I want to go back to the earlier years of his career, back when he did drive this number 29. Because while only 23 of Harvick's currently 60 wins came in the 29, you know, less than half, arguably his biggest wins came in that car. Obviously he won a championship, he won Homestead in the four. He won the last two Brickyard 400s, at least for the time being in the four. He's won Darlington. He's got some crown jewels with the four, no doubt. But let's go back to 2001 Atlanta. We've talked about it. One of the biggest moments in NASCAR's recent history. A healing moment, a triumphant moment uh, for not only Kevin Harvick, but the entire industry. A photo finish holding off a hard charging Jeff Gordon who is still at his peak. An incredible moment, an incredible win that happened in the 29. Skip ahead a few years and Kevin Harvick won his first Brickyard 400 driving the number 29. Checking a very impressive crown jewel off the list early. A couple years after that, 2007, the Daytona 500. Kevin Harvick's only Daytona 500 win came in the number 29. We've all seen the finish, photo finish between him and Mark Martin. Great stuff. And I'm sorry, Dale Earnhardt Jr. fans, but Harvick got another crown jewel win in 2011 at Charlotte, the Coke 600, when you know Dale Earnhardt Jr. Tragically ran out of gas on the last corner. Kevin Harvick won a ton of big races in the 29, even though he's won more in the four. The 29 stage of his career will always be looked at fondly, uh, will always be memorable. Let me know down in the comment section below which past Kevin Harvick win, whether it was when he drove the 29 or the four, which Kevin Harvick win is the most memorable in your opinion. If you wanna read more about some of Kevin Harvick's biggest wins, you can check out a recent post by the Daily Downforce. I'll link that down in the description below. That'll do it for this episode. So I wanted to keep it quick. I know I'm a day late, but I wanted to highlight Kevin Harvick, give him the credit he deserves. Really cool that RCR allowed SHR to use the 29. Looks great. Can't wait to see it on track in North Wilkesboro in just a couple of months. Kevin Harvick, early career was fantastic, but what he's done recently is arguably even more impressive. A future Hall of Famer, no doubt. I'm glad in his swan song final season, he's getting a moment to pay tribute to his own remarkable racing history, but leave a comment down below. That's gonna do it, y'all. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like. If you love NASCAR, you're in the right place. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming content. And thank you as always to my Patreon supporters for your continued and very generous support. Once again, be sure to head to Daily Downforce. You can find Out of the Groove merch there as well as the latest trending stories from around the racing industry. And again, click that link down below to relive some of Kevin Harvick's greatest victories. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you again very soon. Enjoy Atlanta.